The first trial of an officer involved in the Freddie Gray case has ended today, and it ended in a mistrial. Officer William Porter, he was facing manslaughter charges that after Gray died while in police custody. The incident, of course, spurred violent protests and riots earlier this year. People, they're gathering today, but so far, things pretty peaceful. A hearing is set for tomorrow to discuss a possible retrial date. Um, now, as we know, Jimmy, this was hardly uh, the only defendant here, but a lot of people were first questioning the logic and the strategy of the prosecution in that, you know, you're trying to in effect the weakest case, the, the stronger cases you have against the other defendants. Why do they put this guy up first? I don't know. I disagree with the logic. To me, it makes no sense. You've now put this <clears throat> notion out there or this sense out there that it's a weak case. People look at the headlines, they're going to look and see that it was a, a mistrial, and they're going to think it was a weak case. The, the more important thing, though, and we've talked about it so often in the last year, is if you look at the reaction so far as being peaceful, if you look at the admirable statements that the family yep. made to the jury, thanking the jury for their service, telling them we're not angry with and you, pleading you did for peace job, from the public and to let the judicial process And something, play and something Mayo said off camera, you charge the guy, you bring him to trial, people are not going to be necessarily be as upset. It's when you have a grand jury presentation that results in nothing and you don't know it was presented and, and, and you haven't really presented it with a view towards indictment that people feel that you're I not. I hear you. We can point to other examples, though, Mayo, where they take it to trial and there's not a conviction and the public certainly loses it. All you got to do is go out to California and, and remember the Rodney King case. This wasn't an acquittal. And Fair Rodney enough. But my video. point is a <laughs> mistrial... <laughs> Um, to all the folks I was listening to today say huge um, setback uh, for the prosecution, especially given there's a bunch of other defendants to follow. But it wasn't just the strategy. The chances of getting a conviction going forward is going to be a whole lot harder. It's not just that this got hung and they're going to try it again and they start from scratch. I don't know. And I think that I'm not sure how that broke down, you know, so whether it was a 12-1 or what it was. I don't know. It might have been 11 to convict and one who says no. So I'm not so certain. And the other thing is this. If it's the weaker case, um, presumably they believe they had enough to bring charges. And, and it wasn't an outright acquittal. So there were some jurors, at least at least one juror that thought that he was guilty. And the thought process may have been if we get a conviction on our weakest case, it sends a chilling message to everybody else who we have more evidence against. So it's difficult to tell. And you know you can easily win and lose a great case in, in jury selection. It has nothing to do other than you have the wrong juror on, the, on your panel. You know, the reality Come on, is... You would have tried the other ones first. Sure. <laughs> of course you would have. He's being polite for the first time. Uh, on this one, at least. We're, but tell you, the reality is the tension that's been heightened in so many communities. Um, this wasn't a shooting case, but so many have been questionable shootings, now the advent of video, whether it's body cameras or people with iPhones or whatever else. How much of who, when to charge, even if you're not sure in the past you would have got a conviction, but to appease basically the public, then the preparations during the trial for if a verdict comes back that's not going to satisfy the public, the messaging from leadership here that's going out. I mean, there was a lot of, I think, legitimate questions as to, you know, not just what the mayor had to say a little bit less, but also uh, the prosecutors in the case here. We heard you, no justice, no peace, you know, and then people are like, wait a minute here. You're basically convicting the guy before we've even gotten to trial. Um, how much of this is a new world for lawmakers, uh, let alone law enforcement officials, to try and figure out in terms of messaging to an obviously angry public? Well, I, I think it's important not to lose sight. And in, in from my experience in representing a very diverse city with a predominantly white police department and a predominantly majority, a minority community, justice, it's the element of justice. The fact that this case went to a trial, as my colleagues have said, that there was due consideration, that a jury considered the evidence. Most people of goodwill, in my opinion, not all, believe that's what had been missing from the conversation. And once that justice occurs, the opportunity to present evidence, the opportunity for the officer to either choose to defend himself or whatever he chose to do, most people want that. And they feel like we never got that because because uh, the victim was African-American. Once that occurs, I think many, many people will find that a reasonable, acceptable mm. resolution.
And Richard, you know, that happens every single day for our clients, okay? So 99% of the time, if you look at the Central Park Five, mm -hmm. you had Donald Trump taking out a million dollar ad saying that they were animals. You had everybody talking about how they were guilty before anything even started. That's the norm. Normally, if you are a defendant, you're tried well before you're even arraigned in court. And then you find out that there was no evidence that it clearly pointed to other people and that these guys spent 15 years in prison when everybody pretty much had an idea that they didn't do it. So when you look at all of that, um, you know, it, it, the only difference here is that we're talking about law enforcement. And generally, uh, the population is more likely to be charged uh, with less evidence than to see someone who's abused them be charged. And if you bring the charges, and again, I'm not saying bring charges against officers who shouldn't be charged. Now, there may be officers in this case that, that shouldn't have been charged at mm -hmm. all, and if that's the case, that's not wise, but more than that, it's unjust. But you have to look at the cases, make sure you have enough evidence to support your charges, be sure about that, because that's, that's the yeah. power that, as Jimmy was saying, a prosecutor has. Um, a couple of fascinating cases I want to get to before we run out of time tonight. The next one, the Bo Bergdahl saga, and it continues. First, it was looking like the sergeant who left his post in Afghanistan. He may be, he would have possibly gotten off easy in terms of punishment, but now he possibly could be looking at a life sentence. We'll tell you who's saying what and we'll ask the table what they think justice is. Stay with us.